Hi everyone, today we will discuss about Arboreal Trust, a very high yielding stock, more precisely a mortgage REIT that operates mainly on the multifamily sector offering loans for mortgages. Multifamily, more common known as apartments properties. Also Arboreal Trust have joined recently the SP Small Cap 600 that is, was an important milestone from the stock. So the stock now be exposed to ETFs that track this index. That was just a quick overview. And in this video, we're going to do a stock review of Arboreal Trust. Um, and we go a bit deeper and few topics such as dividend hikes, the reliability of the dividend, talk about the distributor earnings per share, payout ratio, dividend stock growth and debt, and also the Arboreal Trust portfolio. Um, I will talk about my position um, in ABR and the impact that had my portfolio and my recent acquisition. Recently I bought more shares, we're going to talk about that as well. And a quick prediction, if I don't add any more shares of ABR, just the ones I own currently, how much I'll be making dividends from ABR alone in 10 years. So without no more delays, let's start. So let's talk about first about dividend track record of uh, ABR. ABR is was founded in 2003 and has been paying dividends since 2004. They've been cons fairly consistently um, on their dividends until 2008 because of the, yeah, the famous real estate um, crisis in 2008. Uh, they cut their dividends and they started back in 2012, increasing dividends and ever since they have a track record of 10 years dividend increase. Maybe you can even say already 11, if it's not 11, the 11 is already in the corner. So they've been with a very good dividend track record, we can say so far. Talk about the distributed earnings and the payout ratio. So they use this metric distributed earnings similar to REITs that use FFO. They use distributed earnings um, so they can measure better the earnings they can use to pay back to the shareholders. And to the, considering the last report of the Q3 for 2023, um, they have a distributed earnings of 55 per share diluted per share. So diluted is interesting because taking consideration if the company issued any new shares, they already um, accounting on that. And so it's a very good number for us. And this represents um, a payout ratio of 78% considering the current dividend of 43 cents per share. That's the current dividend for ABR. And that's a very safe payout ratio, I would say, because there is a bit of room there for, for the company to pay more debt and in reinvest and the business is good to see a, a room there. And when we talk about mortgage REITs, they, they are very leveraged. REITs in general are leveraged and especially mortgage REITs are even more leveraged. So it's good to see a little bit of room here for ABR. Which brings us to the subject of dividend growth. So uh, we see they have room to keep growing their dividend. The dividend growth for the last five years is being like uh, above 10%, the last 10 years as well, the last three years. So uh, this is a great track record for the dividend. They've been a great dividend growth, even when you consider that uh, they, are, they are very high yielder. So, uh, we're going to discuss about the current yield in a moment, but uh, since the current macroeconomics, they uh, have to slow down on the dividend increase, but uh, we still have a decent um, forward growth of uh, 7% for ABR, even this tight in the market we live at the moment. So uh, I still think it's so strong when you consider that ABR um, offers in the current price over 13% and nearly 14% yield. That's a very strong uh, growth for such a high yield. And this can have a big impact in the long term if the company have no dividend cuts and the company still continues to uh, deliver strong dividend increases as they have been doing for 10 years. But we have to discuss some bad things as well. Not all is great because there's a lot of debt on Arboreal Trust. So let's talk a bit about the cons as well. 
so it's very common in REITs in general they're very leveraged because on their business REITs have to qualify REITs they have to pay 90% of the taxable income um, to the shareholders so which let the REITs in general they don't uh, they're not able to retain much cash to invest reinvest in their business and they to do that so they borrow money and they end up have a high debt and even more than REITs mortgage REITs are way more leveraging sometimes than REITs in general so environments like now like with high interest rates it's very tough on them that's why one of the things to be aware of, mortgage REITs are well known for cutting their dividends and so a lot of investors like to stay off of uh, mortgage REITs they like to keep the decent mortgage REITs and I completely understand that but so far ABR has shown a bit different from the others that's that's been very good with the uh, consistency with their dividend if their committing the shareholder has been amazing so the management is doing a great job um, so far but we still have these concerns with ABR because uh, for example they cut their dividend after 2008 so if we fall in another recession and maybe ABR would have to cut their dividend same as they did in 2008 so something good to be aware but uh, so far ABR is doing a great job and but it is good to bear in mind that uh, they have uh, a lot of debt so Q2 had over 12 billion and they were able to reduce this to only 12 billion so it's a, a good uh, a good decrease there they were able to pay that so it's good the average costs have increased because the interest rates are increasing so the average cost increase increased from 7.11% 7 to 7.37% so uh, that's a high cost you know like um, they, this high interest environment is, is being tough for them and these bring risks to the stock so that's why it's good to bear this in mind a lot of people like to a lot of investors like to avoid mortgage rates because there is risk I don't want to paint just a beautiful picture for you guys I want you guys to understand there is this risk and my point of view is being an amazing stock but there is risk and it's good to understand the, the risk if you want to invest in this stock but hopefully we had our less dividend hike on this cycle and hopefully we will see uh, dividends being start to be cutting by 2024 and if this happens this might improve the ability of uh, ABR to get healthier, um, low, low its debts and even increase have a nice increase of dividends for the foreseen futures so let's see how this will play uh, just before we move to my current positions and the impact ABR has on my dividend portfolio income here I am dividend fire and I'm bringing all about my journey to retire as early as possible I want to retire in 10 years and to do and to do that I need to be very aggressive and that's what I'm doing my portfolio being very aggressive to retire as early as possible deploying the most capital as I can to increase this dividend portfolio till this income is able to retire me um, and I can live a life job free if you I can say so check out uh, other videos in the channel as well when when this video is over please I highly recommend you to subscribe to the channel to follow this journey from now to retirement now let's discuss my position in ABR ABR is um, I, I is nearly making at this current price nearly three thousand um, dollars in my portfolio is a, a decent position I would say my second largest largest position after after my last acquisition we can see here my last position is real income that I had done a lot of acquisition in this past months especially this exact month of November and ABR my second largest position above 13 percent of my portfolio and some people can find these a very big positions especially real income uh, but the real income is such a reliable stock that I want to have a very strong reliable stock as a core my portfolio so I don't mind making them kind of large position especially because this opportunity to get a real income in a such low price won't last forever so I'm taking that advantage so at some point real income will go up ABR will go up I hope so 
and then I'll be uh, I'll be focusing other stocks because the markets are cyclical and today those are the most the best opportunities in my opinion and at some point other opportunities will show up but uh, focusing in the ABR here going back to the tracks uh, my current po my previous position ABR was 100 shares what uh, my average price was 11.36 dollars my yielding cost was a bit above 15 percent amazing yielding cost um, that was paying me quarterly $43 and annually $172. But with my new acquisition, I bought 124 shares. So I had 100 shares and I bought more than double, 124, which my current position now makes 224 shares of ABR with an average price 11.83. So you can see I went a bit over my average price because my previous price was such a low price that uh, I just got a perfect moment in my first purchase of ABR and I, I, I'm not sure if I will be able to maybe I will but I'm not sure it will be hard to get and such a low price but um, in the last Friday um, you if you're watching this video on a Sunday when I released the video uh, last Friday, uh, the stock was just going down 9% and I took the advantage to purchase more shares that when I took the action. So my yielding cost you amazing, uh, above 14%, 14.5%, amazing. And now I'll be receiving quarterly um, $96 and annually $385. So was a nice punch on my portfolio. And now I'll show what this impact is doing my portfolio. So the impact it's doing my portfolio is that the average of what I receive in a monthly now in my portfolio will be $114, which my previous average was $77. So this pushed my, my average quite high. My highest month now pay me 160 because it will be the months I'm receiving dividends for ABR. Um, ABR always pay on the second month of the quarter. So my next payment of ABR will be on February and February I'll be receiving massive dividends. So I'm so excited for that. Now I want to do a quick prediction, more for entertainment because the future is uncertain. But we use the data we have for the moment to try to picture how much I'll be receiving from ABR in the future if I only invest, if I only reinvest the dividend without adding any additional money, just reinvesting its dividend. Uh, but just before I go on it, I want to remind you guys I'm not a financial devices advisor. This is not a financial advice. Please do your own research because especially stocks like ABR that's very high yield. The, the sector of mortgage REITs is a more uh, risk sector, more volatile. So um, have in mind, if you have a stomach for that, for a high yielder, for a more volatile stocks, bear this in mind before doing any investment on a more risky stock. Otherwise, just stick to some more reliable, such a real income, for example. Um, so bear this in mind. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not advice. And I'm just sharing my own experience my own experience okay but by the end of the video i'll give my overall opinion on abr what i'll think about it if you will do um on this platform here dividend calculated from mark to beat um i put my 224 shares and my average price is the current price is above my my price my average price is 11.83 um, if I don't add any more new money, um, a dividend tax rate I put 20% because every person is a different case. So I put 20% just to cover um, the annual my dividend yield on cost is 14.29. Dividend increase for last five years is being over 10%. But since it's such a high yield, I want to be very conservative. Even though according to Seeking Alpha, the forward dividend growth per share is expected to be around 7%. I want to be very conservative here in our example and I put just 3%. It's a super high yield, so I just put 3%. And I'll put uh, that will be, I want to see the result from 10 years. And this show that this investment would in 10 years end up becoming a balance 
of uh, 1,700. Remember, the current value of uh, my stocks are $2,800. Would jump to 1,700 with a total return of over 300% with average, uh, average annual return way above 10%, 15%, and with a union cost of 50%. And just remind you, I was very conservative here. Um, the track record of uh, EBR is being way more than 3% here in the dividend increases. But if I put this dividend for 20 years, uh, the results will be way mind-blowing. Like, uh, I'll be receiving every year just for, from these stocks alone, over 6,000 in income just per year. Um, so uh, would would be some over, over 1,500 total return, it would be madness. So um, it's a, such a high yield. If they don't cut the dividend in the next 20 years, it will be just madness. Um, which is good to remember, is a mortgage rate, uh, even even Arbor Realtors, they have been increasing the dividends for 10 years. So if they do that just for more 10 years, would be already amazing. Even better if they're able to do for 20 years. Now, I just want to wrap it up my thoughts here on ABR and what I think overall about today's stock. So Arbor Realtors is a high yielder on my portfolio. Um, they have a very high yield that's helped my portfolio have a punch in dividend income. I acknowledge they have a bit of risk there for uh, the industry they operate, the mortgage rates, but I still find them very valuable that they've been with a strong commitment of the shareholder increasing the dividend for more than 10 years. And I believe they have learned a lot with the 2008 crisis. And I hope with this learning, they have strengthened their business so they won't have to cut the dividend again on the future. For example, on the highlights of the Q3 2023, on the highlights, they, have a, they show they have a strong liquid position with nearly a billion in, qua, in cash. I believe they are strengthening the business. Tough environments like we live in now is very risk for them. We can end up seeing a dividend cut happen the next year. I believe it won't be because they are showing strong results, but everything is possible. Keep that in mind. If they start reducing the interest rates um, in 2024, we probably see the stock share price skyrocketing. If the um, Fed decide to raise the interest even more, this will impact bad on the stock, so the dividend cut will be very possible. So this next year will be very uncertain for the stock. It will be a very vol volatile stock for the short term, but I believe that they will be able, that's why I'm investing. If I didn't believe in the stock, I would have been buying. It wouldn't make sense. So if I'm buying it because I believe, I believe that the stock will pass this tight um, environment, this tough, high, raised, high interest rate environment. And, and when they stock pass that, they will be, the stock, uh, the stock will be safer, the stock price will go a lot high, and I'll be just collecting my huge dividends from what I like to call ABR, a dividend juggernaut, because they are massive dividends, massive cash flows coming from this company. So I like a lot. Um, it's my only mortgage rate because it's the only one I felt comfortable uh, the only one I felt that was reliable enough with a strong track record with a strong commitment of not cutting the dividend um, for at least the last 10 years. So that's very strong. But uh, always remember, this is my own opinion. Do your own research and do your own decision, okay? And again, if you're enjoying the videos of the channel, please highly recommend you subscribe to the channel so I can continue come here and share with you guys all my journey all my progress. See you next video. Bye-bye.